All right, welcome to the September 26, 2023 Indie Contributors Call. A few things to talk about on the agenda. We'll see where the conversation goes. Um, we are recording the session and we'll be posting the results after, uh, after the call. Um, a reminder that this is a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect listed on your screen. The Hyperledger Code of Conduct linked on your screen is available. Um, I've posted the agenda link on the screen so people can sign in um, and add their name. Anyone new want to introduce themselves on the call? Lots of people we know. All right. Uh, any announcements um, to be added? I know IIW is coming up. The Hyperledger um, Summit is coming up in San Francisco. Both of those should probably be under the announcements. Um, Hyper, uh, IIW is in two weeks, um, and I believe it's the Hyperledger Summit in four weeks. I will get those added to this. Uh, hopefully people are going to those events. We can get together in person and have these discussions. All right, any other announcements from anyone else? Any agenda items to be added to the uh, meeting? Awesome, all right. Um, I did wanna point out this. Um, I, I, I should have looked up the um, item. Um, in any node in plenum, there is a PR, uh, sorry, there's an issue that requests a PR be added to, um, I believe it's plenum, <laughs> not certain. Um, I think it's plenum, um, but basically to uh, replace the URSA implementation of Indy BLS signatures with the um, Indy version of BLS signatures. So with the archiving of the URSA project um, in the, uh, the BLS signatures um, crate, Rust crate was moved out of URSA uh, and put into Indy as a repo and um, adjusted to put it there. Um, we could really use uh, that in uh, the, the Indy plenum, I believe is, as I'm sure, I'm not quite sure if it's node or plenum, I think it's plenum. Um, should be updated to use that and not use URSA any further. Um, it should be a pretty straightforward um, dependency change and then run all the tests and verify all the tests. So um, if anyone um, is looking for something uh, hopefully pretty easy to contribute to the project, that would be a good one. Um, suppose we could look up, I'll try to find the PR number, uh, or sorry, the issue number to replace uh, to um, identify this. Um, if anyone wants to look up now um, and add it, that would be great. Um, that's where we are. Uh, I did want to ask about those that operate networks to give an update if you have any on um, progress towards indie upgrades. Lynn and or Wade primarily. Yeah, I'll start. Um, so the uh, Indicio testnet upgrade uh, to 20.04 is complete. Oh, excellent. The, yeah, and then the uh, we started on our demo net and I ran into some serious issues. I don't know if if we want an explanation of uh, what happened there here, but uh, it would the, be helpful. Uh, well, have you and Wade shared it? Uh, it would be actually it would be helpful if you could. Yeah, I'd be happy to to give okay. some details. Uh, let me. But the the demo net is uh, four sevenths of the way upgraded right now. So we we're we're on our way. We uh, worked around the issues and are and are continuing. Uh, with our demo net upgrade, and then uh, we'll we have scheduled the the main net upgrade as soon as the demo net's done. So we're we're making good progress, and uh, we're just a little bit behind schedule. We were hoping to do like a network every three weeks or or so, and we're 
Uh, we're, we're working just a little bit um, behind that schedule, but it, uh, pretty close, right? We're within a week of being able to keep up with the a three week upgrade per network so far. So, can you give a quick summary of the issues update uh, encountered on DemoNet? Yeah. So last time uh, I did talk a little bit about the oh, okay. um, the test net okay. upgrade and the issues I had there, and yeah. then um, somebody said. Hey, is there a, a document that describes that and uh, how to troubleshoot the issues that you had there? Uh, at a very high level, it, it seemed like um, if we tried to connect, uh, one of the issues was if we tried to connect to uh, add a new node to the network, but that node was not able to connect to the primary node, that uh, that things went south. It was it, it caused a bad situation, and so I did document that. And I checked it in and I'm in some troubles getting the merge there. It was approved, but the merge just hasn't happened yet. But I, I, I created a document so that um, just so everyone knows that that document with the troubleshooting stuff that um, that I promised last time is complete. So um, then uh, the demo net issue is a. Um, um, OK is a, an unknown as to what caused it. And what, what happened was I added a, a, a node to the demo net after um, doing the upgrade as, as normal part of the upgrade the, uh, did not remove the node from consensus. The, the keys and all are still the same. Mm -hmm. add, to add the node back in with the same keys to as if the node had gone down and started back up, but now it's 2004. Um, and I don't think this is a 2004 issue, but what happened when I added the node back in was the network uh, almost immediately went out of consensus and uh, the other nodes on the network uh, began what I call a split brain thing that has happened several times to me. I don't know that anyone else has ever experienced it. And so I don't, which is kind of weird because I've seen it so many times, but the split brain means that uh, three or four of the nodes um uh keep the same primary and then the other nodes decide that there's a different primary and they start looping around with few changes um to uh, to keep trying to to fix their issues that, that they're having where they don't agree with the the primary that the other ones have and so it's a it's like almost like two networks trying to communicate together on the same thing it's a it's something i believe i created an issue on and I've documented, but uh, we haven't ever been able to get in and, and fix it. So I did try and spend some time this last week debugging and going through to try and figure out what caused it and how it happened. I came up with some ideas and tried to prove or disprove the ideas. And um, uh, one of the ideas that I came up with, uh, I shared with Wade and then, uh, sorry, Wade, but I, it, it turns out that it was just kind of circumstantial. It, it seemed like the uh, um, the DDoS protection thing might have had something to do with it because it the, I started seeing these kinds of behaviors. It seemed like right after we had added DDoS protection and stuff, but uh, I wasn't able to prove whether that had a, a, any correlation. So um, it would take uh, a couple of weeks of effort probably to set up something and replicate the issue in house to 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 get to the bottom of everything and figure out uh, what's there because I think um, that it didn't happen at all on the test net, but it did happen on the NDCO demo net. And uh, part of the reason that and I think it might have happened is because of the extremely large size of the audit uh, ledger on the demo net. It's a uh, one point three million or something. So let me tell you the workaround in case anyone ever sees this. Essentially, the workaround is um, to to get a, a copy of the ledger from one of the nodes that's working when you get it back up and working, <laughs> once you get it back in consensus and everything's working well, get a copy of the ledger from one of the working nodes. Um, unfortunately, that means you have to shut down the node to, to get that copy. And so you may have issues with your ledger staying up if you don't have enough nodes on it, but that um that's what i had to do i had to shut down one of the nodes um i just stop indie node 
and then get a copy of the ledger. Uh, and when I copy that, you know, uh, almost full copy of the ledger over to uh, the node and then start it up again, it comes right up. It doesn't have any problems. So um, there's an issue with, uh, with the catch up somehow, it seems. And so, and uh, I, it's, it was several hours last week that I poured through the logs and thought about it, trying to go through it. And I, I wasn't able to determine um, uh, the real cause there. So. So is that then good best practice is to always start with a copy of the ledger when you're starting the node, uh, starting a new node? For the demo net, that's what I have to do. And that's a that's not a bad practice if you if you're concerned about whether your ledger is going to come up or not, is uh, and that's probably what I'll do on my main net just to be cautious, is get yeah. a copy of the ledger, yeah. uh, put it out there, and then and then it comes right up. You don't have to wait two or three hours for right. consensus, uh, or sorry, for the, the catch up to happen. And uh, and it works, and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, so just to clarify, Bruno from IDLab here, uh, just to clarify the, the difference with this problem from the one we had when upgrading the test net is that actually uh, you, you're starting a node completely empty and it never managed to catch up. That's it. That's correct. And uh, what happened was I, even though it went out of consensus, it still looked like it was trying to catch up and I waited like an hour and 20 minutes. Um, but then it turned out somebody was trying to do a demo at that time and that messed them up. And so I had to stop waiting to see if it actually would come okay. around and fix itself. And so I, um, I got in a lot of trouble, but besides that, <laughs> um the yeah i tried waiting and i and i went back as i was looking through the logs it uh it actually made it to uh 800,000 or so in the hour and 20 minutes it was it was moving and still moving and it might have finally caught up and returned everything back to consensus etc but it um being out of consensus and uh, it, everything went slow. The the response times were slow, and so it, it caused a a major demo to to be not working, and that was that was big trouble for me. Interesting. So, so since that is doable and it reduces the time for a a node to begin, it seems like it's a it's the right thing to do. Starting <laughs> with a copy of the ledger from a valid node. Right, it's a good workaround. It'd still be great if we could find the bug, but it, right now that's that's what we have as a workaround is to yeah uh, to get a copy of the data directory and to make sure when you copy the data directory over, you change the name of the subdirectory to be the name of the node, and then you're good to go. It's just added, um, added overhead having to. To do that, yeah, but so it seems gotta like get, you, you got to get the like... copy to the to the steward, and they need to load it on their system. So there's you know some additional work there that needs to be done, depending on how how much access they have to their to their system. Yeah, it just seems like you would get that at the beginning of the uplet, up upgrade process. Get one copy. Always use that one, even though things would have moved on by the time you, you don't need to get it right before the, as mm -hmm. long as you have the majority, that's what it sounds like. The majority of the ledger, yeah. you don't have to have it perfect, right? Cause it's always going to be behind. Yeah. It's just the yeah. logistics of delivering the copies of yeah. The, yeah. the files and getting those loaded onto the machines. Okay. Awesome. Okay, and so now you're back on track and you're just doing the fifth, sixth, and seventh nodes on demo net and you think it's gonna go smoothly, Lynn? Yep, that's right. The 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 last two nodes that I upgraded, the first two were were didn't work very well. And then the last two have worked great. So the, the workaround is is working great. Uh, 
so, so, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm trying to clarify. So uh, some nodes, you didn't have to copy the data directory, but some nodes you had to. I mean, when you upgrade, you have something that's practically the same and that shouldn't be, there shouldn't be so much catch up. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Yeah, so as I understand it, when you start up a new node, it reaches out to all of the other nodes and builds up its data directory, it builds yeah. up its ledger from the data directory. And I think what Lynn is saying is if you have start from an existing one, um, it can process it and then continue to extend it to whatever is missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's right. Excellent. Um, any comments from you, Wade, on progress? You're you're mostly still in the documentation phase. Is that yeah. Right? Um, from my standpoint, the documentation for the sovereign side is done. Uh, we just need to uh, start um, notifying a select few stewards um, and get them to get on board uh, with updating their uh, migrating their nodes. And then we can sort of to start with at least one at a time, go through the process uh, with them and and see how that all goes. Um, I s fired a link in the chat to some uh, documentation that uh, Lynn yeah. did on the troubleshooting you just talked about. So the other thing that Lynn and I have uh, also talked about and are in the progress of. Of, of doing um, mostly mostly Lynn is um, getting the uh, the documentation that Indicio and Sovereign uses for uh, setting up nodes and everything uh, documented and included uh, in uh, the Indie node repository so that it's uh, more readily available for everybody and there's is more of a single single copy where we can all contribute to it. So yeah, like I think a directory out there, and uh, I've got the AWS one mostly done, and then uh, I'll be working on the other uh, documents uh, to, to get those out there. And then I was going to add the validator preparation guide as well, I think. Um, but it, reformatting that to be marked down is, is turning out to be a little bit heavier than I thought, but uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's good to get it out there, so I'm going to continue through and work through that, and get, hopefully get a lot of that done today. But is that a Google Doc? They are Google Docs right now, but what we're going to do is uh, make them as Markdown and put them in the Indie Indie Note yeah. repository. There's a um, I use a, uh, a a Google extension called Docs to Markdown. Yep, that's what I'm using. Okay, I, I use that to start with, but the Somehow I haven't formatted it right. And then all the sub numbers get to be 53, 54, instead of being, you know, okay. 6.1.3 or whatever it is. And so that the numbering is the start of it. And then, and it, it, some of it's outdated. So it's taking some time to get an yeah. updated as well. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all right. It's just yeah. taking a little longer than I had hoped. I also found chat GPT helps with um, converting to things like that. The only place I'm using chat GPT these days is to format JSON into um, CSVs and markdown tables and stuff like that. It's surprisingly good at it. Yeah. So I did have one other follow on um, a quick question. I, I see Renata, you're on the, the line here. I know you have some expertise in uh, looking at logs and debugging what happened on networks and why things happened it, it are you okay if i put together something and and send gather some logs and and send you the stuff to see if you can um, help to figure out what went wrong with the the split brain scenario i'm seeing hello <laughs> so i'm not sure that uh, my uh, knowledge is actual right now uh, but of course could you please share your logs and uh, i'll check my back and help somehow and small joke i tried to generate JD method through gpt chat it's so stupid <laughs> <laughs> 
right? Absolutely because, awful yeah. for the idea specifications. It can't. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Okay, thanks. I'll put together uh, as best I can what the scenario is and what I think happened and, and send you the logs and, and thank you very much for having, if you can have a look at that. We'll be happy to help. All right, any more on network upgrades? That was great. That was lots of, lots of good stuff. Thank you, Lynn, and thanks, Wade. Awesome work, Lynn, on, on getting the two networks almost there and that is um i assume that includes cat herding with the stewards and things like that right yes um we, yeah. we send out a notification and say please update within the next two weeks and yeah um and then it turns out we have to be on the line with them to add it back in it, we thought right. early on that maybe they could just add their own back on and just start back up at it Turns yeah. out that it's that doesn't work. You need a, a meeting with them because it yeah. is regularly something that they haven't that they have missed because it's essentially it's adding a new node to the network um, yeah. with an upgrade involved. So yeah. doesn't surprise me. Good stuff. Okay. Um, excellent. Okay. Um, Indie Ecosystem Summit follow-up. I, I, I threw this onto the agenda um, and um, thought we could have a discussion about it. So this is an open discussion. I don't have, um, I'll start with a couple of questions and I see Renata's here, which is awesome. Um, might, might be able to help out. So if we think about Indie on Bezu, um, I sort of look at it as being um, at least a configuration of how you and and guidance um, at, at, at the absolute minimum of how to run Indie on Bezu. I assume there would be code involved in how to do it for a a um, a uh, of an agent, an Aries agent talking to the network. So that would be needed. Um, what I wondered, I guess, I guess I'll start with a question and and just see where we go and just open up everyone encourage everyone to have conversation so if i have a bezu network i have a bunch of clients that are operating um presumably i'm it's at least a permission network um so we want public reads from it private uh permissioned rights um so the biggest thing I wonder about is um, that a non creds has a bunch of objects that have to be stored, files effectively, JSON structures that have to be stored. Where would that data go? Um, what's the, has thought been given as to where that data would be um, put? Um, presumably it would not go on chain or maybe it would. Um, would it go on chain? Would it go somewhere else? What are what are the thoughts on that? Um, so looking at looking at examples of other DID methods uh, used uh, smart contracts, solid yeah. contracts. Yeah. Uh, we see that it's possible uh, to keep uh, objects uh, inside smart contracts, uh, oh. like a storage. So of course it should be in uh, in a chain, okay. in a ledger. Uh, so I believe right now to share our status, uh, we are on the design uh, stage and started some POC. Uh, so moments that uh, we, tricky moments, challenging moments that we see uh, is a signature validation uh, because uh, there is uh, other uh, Ethereum signature that is not uh, ED uh, 25519, uh, but we have to implement it. Uh, so it's not uh, a blocker. In fact, there are some solutions. Uh, and anyway, we can implement it by ourselves, just we don't want this idea because it is cryptography. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, anyway, it's possible. So right now we are looking at different options and try to understand uh, what we are going to do. 
Uh, another uh, challenging moment, uh, of course, is a question of um, a format of DID documents. So, of course, we can't uh, absolutely um, duplicate uh, the current API in video, but we think about uh, making it as close as possible. Uh, so, and here we have a question about the storage, for example, because we want to uh, keep, to store the full DID document, mm -hmm. uh, not just partly like meme, like a trip transaction yeah. and have a full DID document. But of course, uh, every time, all the time, when we uh, try to change something to make it better, uh, we need to change uh, a normal API. So again, it's not um, something critical uh, because we can uh, do these changes to make it similar with the current uh, API on the VDR level, SDK level. And so it will be okay for areas to update in VDR version, for example, mm -hmm. uh, without big changes. So our plan here uh, is um, finalize some small demo, maybe, yeah. and uh, just check in some specific moments. And after this, maybe create an uh, open source hyperledger project uh, yeah. to think together about this, because right now we are close in DSR and brainstorm these topics, and it will be really, it will be really great to discuss it with the whole community. Okay. I sent a note at um, Hart Montgomery's suggestion, had her back to um, Matt Nelson at um, Bezu, but I haven't heard back. I don't know. I don't know him. So it was an out of the blue <laughs> request, but we'll see. Um, I can, Stephen, I can follow up with Hart on that. I'm going to talk to him later today. Okay. Daniel's queuing up some questions. Go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, so this is mostly stemming from uh, a general unfamiliarity with Bezu. Um, so I, I had a couple of questions, and I'll have to give credit to Sam for thinking up some of these questions as well. Uh, but uh, so with Bezu and, and the proof of authority model, um, so like the more permissioned model for consensus, does is there anything like mining that is still required in that consensus model? Like, is there any of that you know, hash puzzle wasteful thing going on or, or is it completely different? It's completely different. Uh, we uh, decided to use uh, KubeFT protocol uh, and yes, this one. Uh, so it's possible to do proof of authority uh, for this uh, consensus protocol uh, with uh, without gas price. Okay, good to know. Uh, the the other question I had was, uh, how closely related is Bezu to the Ethereum project? Is Bezu itself like built off of Ethereum, uh, as in like the chain code for it, or or is it just an Ethereum compatible blockchain? And, and then if we if there are close to close ties to the Ethereum project, is there anything like if if the Ethereum community decided to go and do something that wasn't really in line with our goals, would we be stuck going along with that? Or, or what are the opportunities for divergence? Um, if that's the case, I guess. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, honestly speaking with, uh, with the community is our next goal. Uh, so speaking about uh, Bezo projects, uh, it's like an addition for Ethereum node, uh, like uh, private transactions, maybe you know about this feature for Ethereum. So you have some additional teeny node, uh, teeny addition uh, for Ethereum node. And it's a bit, yes. Uh, so for our project, we suggest uh, to um, implement smart uh, protocols, smart contracts, sorry, uh, for deploying it to Ethereum network. So it might be, uh, deployed with a Bezu network and for a clean uh, Ethereum network because we need Bezu for uh, consensus, mostly for consensus part. 
and validator specific. So basically you can use Bezu on the main net. You could use a smart contract on ethernet main, but the reason we would use this is for the privacy and the permissioning. We would have a, a, a separate network spin up instances of Indie Bezu um, that are private and permissioned. Uh, yep, right now we uh, divided uh... We have a design as small POC. Uh, okay. We divide its uh, authentication part uh, and uh, a role model and uh, SSI part. So finally, uh, we can uh, use smart contracts for a role model for trusty stewards, adding new nodes through trust, uh, through steward accounts uh, only for Bezel part. And if we can imagine a business case when we need uh, to use Ethereum without Bezel. We can use just smart contracts for SSI and so for DID and for non -crits. Okay. And, and so your thoughts are that actually storing the full and on creds objects on the ledger is not actually like there is a way to do that, particularly if you're using your running your own network. Uh, yes, it should be okay. Uh, it is a question about uh, revocation uh, tail files, as usual. But while we speak just about DID documents, it's absolutely okay to uh, store it like a full object. Yeah, okay. The revocation, yeah, you're right. That revocation becomes the issue. But right now we're still, the, the, the revocation entries we have are relatively small, still constrained by the size, size of the tails file. The tails file wouldn't have to go on the ledger itself. So mm -hmm. interesting. Other questions? So honestly, uh, while we are working on uh, some and design some moments, uh, we are open for any discussions and we will be happy for any feedback. So it's not a project that we keep in secret, just we are in the process of publishing our work. And during this, we will be happy for any discussions. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, other questions? I mean, I, I it looks to me like this would be a good way to go. Um, but, um, you know, this is, <laughs> this is the right thing. Um, design and POC spikes. Have you actually, Renata, have you gotten, uh, you know, I mentioned it would be, um, sort of a, a layer. I'm envisioning at least a configuration layer, probably some code and probably an SDK for agents. Those would be the repos um, with the heavy lifting. It, it, would it be similar to that that Bezu would be like plenum? There would need to be a node wrapper around it in, uh, similar to Indie Node today, and then an Indie SDK. Is that the sort of structure of it you're seeing? I'm just not exactly sure what the what the structure would be. Have you gotten far enough in your design to be thinking about that? Mostly the same. We don't plan uh, some additional uh, layers here. Uh, we just plan uh, to have a network without uh, consensus and uh, business part. Uh, yes, just a smart contracts for Ethereum nodes. And speaking about SDK parts, uh, we are going to integrate like a first MVP POC. We firstly want to uh, integrate it in current video and uh, in the SDK. 
uh, to make it possible to try in the current applications anyway. Okay. Without new specific tools as we like in our community. Yeah, yeah, okay. Awesome, any other questions from anyone? Any thoughts? small addition to maybe activate uh, our community. Uh, that uh, there are, we understand that it is a really ambitious uh, project and maybe not the first try. Uh, and the main, why we are working on design at POC, small POCs concepts uh, right now, because we want to be sure in this option. And the second item here is critical item. It is your feedback. Uh, so I right now I feel <laughs> like a blogger, uh, but I really like your feedback to understand uh, do we really need it? Yeah. So any comments? Yeah. You're welcome. Just to, to I guess, comment generally, I like the idea of being able to move to a, a you know a more up-to-date a bigger community um have a little bit more support in that sense um but it seems like there's some pretty significant challenges especially with the migration from existing networks to to the new networks so i, I think that would be a, a pretty significant challenge to overcome there um but in general i'm i'm in favor of of getting us to a point where we have a better maintained ledger base to, to work from. Um, so, yeah. It's a tough problem, yep. Certainly the um, activity on Bezu, the scalability looks impressive. Um, and boy, there's a big, um, there's a big community. Um, Renata, here's a random question. Um, I'm on the uh, Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee. And last week um, we had a presentation um, to enable the transition of Firefly from, um, uh, from a incubation project to a grad graduated project. And so I got exposed to a bunch of things about Firefly and I just wondered, is Firefly a um, potential tool that could be used on the agent side um, as a way to talk to the ledger? So Firefly enables, is sort of a, a is known as a toolkit for connecting and allowing you to build your applications with a variety of ledgers. Um, so it occurred to me in the middle of that, as I'm sitting here thinking, oh boy, we, we would definitely need a uh, an agent side interface. Is, is there any possibility that, or, or, or does Firefly have a potential of playing a role there? I'm seeing you looking up Firefly, so you probably haven't thought of this one before. <laughs> Um, I'm guessing that's a, a I, I don't know, but anyway, I throw that out there as a, as a possibility. That's what Firefly is intended to be, um, whether it would help us in this particular situation and particularly ideas of connecting to, and, and whether it could be even used for two different networks, let alone, could it simplify the agent work for, for connecting to an indie on Bezu, first of all, and second, would it actually give us flexibility in, in multiple networks? It sounds like an interesting idea. Honestly, for answering, I need to uh, uh, read more about Hyperledger Firefly. So it looks like it's possible. Uh, if we speak about a new ledger, of course, uh, it should be okay. If we speak about uh, agency, then looks like uh, we need to update agency for following this idea. But honestly, I don't know. I need to double check yeah. what yeah. is Firefly. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll just throw that out there. It is, again, it looks like a very mature project. It's got a number of, um, you know, it's very active, um, as, as I mentioned, transition from incubation to um, graduate status last Thursday. Um, so um, it's got some maturity and um, whether that is another Lego piece that could be put into play or not, I don't know. I just, you know, it's obviously kind of fits what they're trying to do, whether it is actual a good one for this particular use case, that's a different question. And uh, mm -hmm. Stephen and Indy folks, Hart or myself or other members of staff are happy to uh, make any intros you need to the Firefly team if and when you want. So that's that's not a problem. They, they'd be excited to work with you. I know they they use DIDs in some capacity within Firefly already. So yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone with final comments or should we just wrap it up there? I have a quick a quick question. Yeah. Uh, I stumbled upon something. I'm going to put a chat in the chat, a link in the chat, and I'm okay. speaking backwards today. Uh, the other day, it seems like a we're talking about Bezu as a replacement. Yes. For for okay. indie, I saw that the other day, and I was wondering if anybody has thoughts or has investigated because this sounds like is a non Ethereum drop in replacement. The way that it's written in the README, I haven't really played with it at all, and I'm wondering yeah. if it is any. Yeah, I should have. I, I should raise that, and it's a good point. Um, Dave McKay is someone we've worked with, and um, Vera did is his organization. So he's worked with the Ontario government and done a number of things with Northern Bloc and and various other places in the community. Um, he actually contacted me a while ago about. Um, the same idea, which is to use um, Ethereum Bezu as as a way to do um, a, a alternate to um, to Indy, and I assume this is what uh, this link you've given uh, Emiliano is that work. Um, I I think so. I think so, but he definitely has um, raised that idea and um, and and begun uh, a conversation about it and, and done a bunch of work on it. So Renata, this is something you might want to look into with, with him. Um, Dave McKay, um, don't know about Prob Luger. I don't know why that, that name is there, but Dave McKay is, is the That's person. Latin. And um, yeah, he's definitely in the Canadian um, uh, community and Vera did is a company in Canada. He's uh, we've seen him a number of times. Um, yeah, so Canon and Bezu. Yeah, it's uh, not using Ethereum. Yeah, but he is using Bezu. So, anyway, what? It's interesting, but looks like uh, exact it's exactly a copy of uh, the current India approach. So like a skeleton of uh, transactions without any validation. Okay. So it's a good idea. We Right now we think about uh, having uh, uh, full DID documents with verification methods and uh, right. uh, to add functionality of uh, DID methods, yeah. full functionality. I think that but, would be a necessary component. I agree with you, yeah. That's really interesting, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Emiliano. Um, I'll add that. Okay, any other comments? All right. Thank you. That was a good discussion. Much appreciated. We'll go from there. Um, and as noted, um, feedback interested for DSR on the designs and, and POC spikes they're doing related to this. Good stuff. Have a good one all. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Thank you. Bye-bye.